Hello guys, welcome back to the ROI channel or wherever you may be watching this. Uh, disclaimer, nothing I say is advice, of course. This is just me giving you an over-the-shoulder look, sharing my thoughts with the world. Think of it like a diary documenting my journey. Uh, that is that. On the agenda today, very brief portfolio review and then a few comments on what I see happening towards the end of the year and how I am uh, positioning the portfolio. So uh, if we take a look here at the portfolio in order of highest weighting through to lowest weighting, you'll uh, be able to see quite a story. So here I've been speaking about uh, this thesis for quite a while, the uranium thesis, the offshore um, oil services sector. This is the only way you can really get uh, a beta exposure to that sector in its entirety by using um, eToro. There is another ETF, XES, which is more of a smaller cap, a pure play on oil services, as opposed to the uh, Schlumber J and Baker Hughes, which are a bit more um, oil service tech. But anyway, that's a, a minor comment. Up 25%, um, uranium's just starting to break out. So this is, again, really the only way to get um, access to this uh, the sector thesis via eToro. Um, there is Cameco's individual stocks on here, um, but Cameco, I think, is is pretty close to being fully valued. This is one I've spoken about quite a while uh, with Josh Young's entire podcast where we go into this particular thesis, Vital Energy. Uh, I think it's a triple-digit stock, and we're just starting to see the the market come through to, to our way of, uh, of thinking. I think there's plenty more uh, where that came from. Petrobras, uh, you know how much I love Petrobras. In addition to this 41.5%, uh, increase uh, in price since we bought it. We've received a ton of dividends, uh, over 20% dividend yield, uh, which has just been lovely, lovely, lovely. Similar deal with Ecopetrol. People um, not as willing to re-rate the stock yet. Uh, I think what you're going to see with regards to Ecopetrol is the president of Colombia, Gustavo Pedro, is in his, I think, third year, second or third year. So he's more than halfway through his term. People are just, they don't like the guy, fair enough. Um, he's not a very good manager. But this company is printing cash and they're distributing it, distributing it back to shareholders. I thought the political risk was overblown to begin with, given that only about 2% of the company's float is available um, on a stock exchange to trade anyway. So there's really... Yeah, there's really little downside risk there uh, in terms of geopolitics. Um, but yeah, I think Ecopetrol will do very, very well. Arch Resources Met Coal has been sluggish the start of the year, I think mainly uh, due to recession fears. Thermal coal continu continues to chug away. Met Coal is the, the next big thing. Met Coal uh, sells for high price anyway. And if you look at the electrification theme, the steel needed to make all these solar panels and bloody wind farms and all that sort of rubbish needs met coal really um as a an, a feedstock um, uh, or a the energy component to to form those particular apparati and so i think again it's doing it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do one of my highest convictions, the only thing I don't like is that the price has gone up before I can bump up the weightings. Uh, I think I'll continue to add to it until it's around about a 7 to 7.5% 7 weighting. Um, you guys have seen my video uh, on New Fortress Energy where I really break it down. You see me discuss it with uh, Chapman Scarborough. We go into a really deep dive on this particular company. Um, it's, it's one of my highest conviction plays by far. It's already up 10%. I'm trying to frantically buy <laughs> and build out the position. Fertilizers are looking good, and the Mosaic company is still just kind of humming along, not really doing too much. I've continued to add a weakness, building it to 5.5-ish um, percent weighting in terms of capital invested. I will continue to add a weakness. Um, it's trading at, you know, very low free cash flow multiples, sort of four or five um, times market cap to free cash flow. So life is good there. Similar thing to Peabody, um, with regards to the cash flow valuation and with regards to uh, the coal thesis, Peabody is more diversified. It has access to thermal coal and also to met coal. Geographically diversified, the only problem potentially with Peabody would be that it has some mines in Australia and my lovely government is doing uh, its best to really steal from the coal companies and with these sort of windfall taxes and royalty agreement changes. So 
that could potentially over the next year or so affect Peabody. Uh, I'll just be keeping an eye on it. Um, but in terms of valuation, ridiculously cheap. Uh, the co- company continues to buy back its stock. Uh, and I believe that coal prices, although no one knows for sure, they're, since they've really fallen off a cliff since last uh, European winter, when we saw gas prices go through the roof, coal follows gas, and they've come down, they're stabilized, and that's when I started to scale into these companies. And I think that there's tremendous upside potential towards the end of the year on an already cheap valuation. The Geo Group uh, is the Geo Group. They're doing a wonderful job on deleveraging. See my video about that. The thesis remains intact. I think the company's worth more and more uh, the more that uh, management continue to delever the balance sheet, which they are doing uh, quarter on quarter. So I I, I can't I really can't fault them. Uh, Sid, so yeah, National Steel Company Brazil, Companhia Siderúrgica Nacional uh, will start my Portuguese study next year. Got a lot going on, guys. And so forgive me there. I think it's it's a long-term business. It's extremely cheap. Uh, cement and steel is is needed. And these guys are doing uh, a lot of that. If you listen to my discussion with Chapman Scarborough, he talks about his thoughts on steel being a story for 2024, perhaps 2025. So a little bit of patience involved. I'll continue to add in on weakness. Uh, but Brazilian stocks continue to look Really, really cheap. Transocean already up uh, over a hundred percent since I bought it. Uh, obviously, now I wish I had bought more, but I had to. Uh, it's always the way. Um, the book value for the company is around about fifteen to maybe even twenty dollars if it starts to trade on day rates at the end of the cycle, and we get high multiples on ridiculous day rates. Again, Chapman and I discussed maybe it's a thirty to forty dollars stock. Um, still got balance sheet issues i'm not going to chase the stock if it were to retrace um, for whatever reason then obviously i'd look at adding it adding to it but at the moment i'm just letting it letting it run letting it do, do its thing stone co um as far as i can tell wonderful business continuing to grow at a rapid clip uh, the brazilian market for digital payments is just ridiculous so yeah um if we were to see, a, again, a fall in share price, I would look to continue to add. The Platinum being a little bit sleepy, just kind of ticking along. Not much to say there. Uh, this one here, there is um, some news. So DHC Holdings, I've just released a video. It may be out by the time that you um, are watching this. I'm upping this to around 3% to 5% of assets under management. I think tanker market looks really, really juicy right now. Vale is just a starter position. I want to add to it. I just need to get a little bit more clarification as to a few things. Same deal with Wheaton Precious and Franco Nevada. Wonderful companies, fully priced. Um, I'm just putting a, a small starter position here. Um, as you can see, they're, they're not really worth anything in terms of waiting. I'm hoping that we get a, a crash and then I'll add to them, but we'll see. We will see. Balance uh, in cash, 15.5%. So sitting pretty. Um, so far, this, um, the stats, I didn't even go through the stats, uh, but up year to date, uh, 20%, uh, which is much, much, much more like it. If you look at the rolling average, it's more like uh, 24, 25%. It just means that uh, I've adjusted some of the errors uh, from last year. The theses are, are, are taking, uh, taking hold and playing out beautifully. Um, I just need to stick to to my guns and not listen to other people <laughs> um which is a bit bizarre to say but uh, it just has been the lesson and yeah this is uh, a good illustration of how volatility is a price we pay for our performance so that's that i can continue to expect to see some down months and then some big up months and down months and up months august we ended up just breaking even which like that never happens <laughs> um but there, there you go and so far september's off to a good start that's that. Uh, any questions, by all uh, means, drop me a comment. Uh, if you want to copy the portfolio, all you got to do is jump on eToro and then search uh, either my name or Crassus Investments, uh, which is the name of this particular portfolio fund. Um, and then you just hit the copy button with however much you're uh, comfortable copying and away you go. One thing that I stress that everyone just keeps ignoring is if you do want to copy the portfolio and you understand the thesis and all of that, that's great. Um, I highly suggest you to 
a dollar cost average. So just pick an amount that you might be comfortable with every month and that will help smooth out the volatility because when things are expensive, your fixed dollar amount buys you less. And then when things are cheap, i.e. The, the portfolio is down, it buys you more of those interests, okay? And it helps, helps with the sleep at night factor. Otherwise, all the very best. I look forward to catching up with you in another video shortly. Take care, do your own due diligence and uh, drop me a comment. Thank you very much. Bye.